Uh, the screencast covers module 3 lesson 15 homework. I'm going to give you guidance for help you set up some tape diagrams and and talk about how we're going to solve these problems. Of course solving the problem is up to you but we will give you some help. Alright so we have a baker buys a five pound bag of sugar. She uses one and two thirds pounds to make some muffins and two and three-fourth pounds to make a cake. How much sugar does she have left? This should look and sound very familiar. We've done uh, many, many word problems very similar to this. So we'll set up the tape diagram. That's uh, when we talk about the R W uh, R D W. That means read and then draw. So now we're doing the draw part. And the hole here is five pounds. Okay, what are we doing now? We're going to, she uses one and two-third pounds to make some muffins. So we're going to take away flour when we make the muffins. It goes away. So we'll put an M there. And uh, then we go and look at the two and three-fourths to make a cake. Again, we're taking that away. And how much sugar does she have left? We don't know that. That's what we have to answer. All right, this is a classic problem. We've done many, many examples of that. We can, of course, find the sum of the muffins and the cake and then subtract that from the whole. Or we could take the whole and then subtract the muffins, then subtract the cake. This, again, should be very familiar to you by now. Let's read the next one, part of our RDW. A boxer needs to lose three and one half kilograms in a month to be able to compete as a flyweight. In three weeks, he lowers his weight from 55 and 5 tenths to 53 and 8 tenths kilograms. How many kilograms must the boxer lose in the final week to compete as a flyweight? Well, interestingly, here we have the numbers expressed as fractions and decimals. And we could work either way. We could convert three and one half to a decimal, or we can convert these to uh, mixed numbers with fractions. That's up to you. But remember, we're going to have to choose one or the other. It doesn't tell us uh, what form it wants the answers in. So this is an interesting one to diagram. Okay, we need to lose three and a half kilograms. And we need to find out how much he lost. So we lost, uh, well, we don't know. So we're going to express this this way, 55 and 5 tenths minus 53 and 8 tenths. And we're going to put a question mark here. So what does that mean? We, we're going to have to find the difference of 55 and 5 tenths minus 53 and 8 tenths. Once we find the answer to that, okay, I'll just put it in the day for the answer, uh, we can subtract whatever that answer is from our original 3 and 1 half. Again, Pick whether you want to work with decimals or fractions. Decimals might be a little bit easier, and we should be able to figure out uh, how many tenths. How many tenths is one half? I'll just set that up for you. One half equals how many tenths? Let's go on to the next one. A construction company buys a new rail line from town A to town B. They complete one and one-fourth miles in their first week of work and one and two-thirds miles in their second week. They still have 25 and three-fourths miles left to build. What is the distance between town A and town B? Well, we don't know the hole in this case because the hole is the distance between town A and town B. So we'll make our tape diagram an unknown hole. We do know that in the first week they went one and one-fourth miles. In the second week 
they went one and two thirds. So I'll just write that one and two. And this is what's left. And this time we know what's left. It's 25 and 3 fourths. So we are given three parts and we need to find the whole. You should know what operation is involved with that. I just want to tell you because we have three numbers to work with, I might want to work with the, competitive, uh, the compatible numbers with like denominators first before I work with the other. A catering company needs eight and seventy-five hundredths pounds of shrimp for a small party. They buy two, three and two-thirds pounds of jumbo shrimp and two and five-eighths pounds of medium-sized shrimp and some mini shrimp. How many pounds of mini shrimp do they need to buy? Well, again, what do we have here? We have this uh, mix of whole number, or excuse me, decimals and fractions. I'm going to tell you that in this case it's probably best to work with fractions because of this three and two thirds. Uh, this does not come out to a nice easy to work with decimal. So you're going to find it easier to work with fractions. And we have 75 hundredths. So I'm going to just uh, lay that out. We have 75 hundredths. I think we can simplify that, don't you? Think quarters. Okay, after we've uh, settled on what we're doing in terms of uh, fractions, we'll make a tape diagram here now. Again, we know how much shrimp they need. So we know the whole 8 and 75 hundredths. We know that they buy 3 and 2 thirds pounds of jumbo and 2 and 2 eighths of medium. And we need to know how much the mini is. How much mini do they buy? Um, again, this should look incredibly familiar. The only complicating factor here is that uh, we have decimals and fractions. And I recommend that you change the decimal number to a fraction and find a way to reduce that 75 hundredths to something more manageable. Okay, Mark breaks up a nine-hour drive into three segments. He drives two and a half hours before stopping for lunch. After driving some more, he stops for gas driving some more. We don't know what that is. If the second segment of his drive was one and two-thirds longer than the first segment, how long did he drive after stopping for gas? This one's a little complicated. Well, let's read it again. We know that we have a nine-hour drive, and we need to break that down into parts. Okay, he drives two and a half hours for, before stopping for lunch. So that's our first segment. Now the second segment is one and a half hours greater than the first. So what do we have here? We have another two and a half plus we have a one and two thirds. And that gives us the combined gives us the second segment. And we're now to the point where he stops for gas. This is uh, where he gets the gas. How long did he drive after stopping for gas? Again, this is a pretty common uh, scenario here. We should be able to figure out what to do. Uh, the only difference is instead of uh, putting, uh, working with two numbers in this section, we have three. Uh, the nice thing about that is, is we have two very compatible numbers. That's going to make that pretty easy. So again, we have a couple choices here. We could subtract repeatedly, or we could find the sum and subtract the sum from the whole. 